Welcome to the Reloaders Workshop Tutorial Part 4. In this video we'll talk about the ballistics calculator built into Reloaders Workshop. Now the ballistics calculator can be operated completely independently of the rest of the Reloaders Workshop program. Even if your database is completely empty, you can still use the ballistics calculator. The ballistics calculator is accessed by simply selecting the ballistics tab on the main screen. You can also get to it from the view menu or you can just press the F9 key and that will take you right to the ballistics tab. Now the ballistics tab has five main sections. You have your workshop database up here in the upper left. Below that are the input parameters. To the right you have your bullet trajectory table and on the bottom you have your bullet drop chart and your wind drift chart that allow you to visualize the data that you see in the bullet trajectory table. The workshop database section allows you to select a particular bullet or load uh, that you'd like to evaluate. And we'll talk a little bit more about the database section here in a little bit. As I mentioned, even if your database is completely empty, you can still use the ballistics calculator. You would just ignore this particular section here. The input parameters section has all of the input parameters that the Voters Workshop needs in order to calculate a trajectory table and to draw the charts at the bottom. The first row of data here are, is your bullet information. Uh, the ballistic uh, coefficient, diameter, weight, and length of the bullet. Below that is your firearm information. Uh, what range the firearm was zeroed at, the sight height, the turret click increment, whether the turret is calibrated in uh, minutes of angle or mills, and the twist rate of the barrel. Third row, it has your wind speed and direction. The headwind and crosswind are calculated for you based on the speed and direction. Below that are your atmospheric conditions. The temperature, uh, you can select Fahrenheit or Celsius. The altitude, the pressure in inches of mercury, and the humidity percentage. Below that are your output options. You can tell it the minimum and maximum range that you want calculated the increment uh, that you want to calculate. And in this case I have 0 to 500 yards and I want to uh, increment or I want a calculation every 50 yards. And the target range. Now this information here will affect uh, the increments that you see on the trajectory table as well as the range lines and the target positioning uh, in your charts on the bottom. The trajectory table, of course, has your range in yards based on the minimum and maximum range that you selected in the increment. It has the bullet drop and the bullet drop in either minutes of angle or mill, depending on what you've selected over here on the left. Your wind drift and the wind drift in minutes of angle or mills. The remaining velocity, uh, of course, it starts at the uh, muzzle velocity that you've selected down here at the bottom and goes down from there. The time of flight, in this case, uh, in order to travel 500 yards, this bullet takes 0.849 seconds. And then you have your turret clicks. How many clicks for your elevation and windage uh, turrets uh, you would have to use, either left, right, up, or down, in order to get the impact points right on target. Below that, you have your muzzle velocity. We, you can change the muzzle velocity uh, uh, and, and have it recalculate the trajectory table based on that muzzle velocity. You have a print button where you can print the trajectory table and arrange card. You can even print the charts if you'd like. And we have a couple of options here. We can calculate the stability factor uh, based on the Miller twist rule. And we can compare the reference data. Now we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit here. The bullet drop chart has our little shooter over here on the left. This is a side view of the bullet trajectory. Uh, it has our range markers. Uh, again, it's, uh, those are dependent on uh, the minimum and maximum range that you put up in the input parameters and the increment. The target is placed at the target range that you've selected up here. You see the bullet trajectory. And then it shows you some other information about the, the trajectory of that bullet. For instance, it shows you the apogee. Turn off the 
reference data here. Shows you the apogee, which is the highest bullet, uh, uh, the highest uh, elevation that the bullet achieves above ground level. The ground strike uh, information tells you, you know, where, you know, how many yards downrange your uh, your bullet will hit the uh, the ground. That's based on a, on a 60 inch muzzle height. See down here, it tells you uh, 60 inches for your muzzle height. We have our over here on the left. We have the legend. Uh, it's telling me here that the black line indicates the current data that I see in the input parameters. The bullet will hit 12.49 inches low uh, from the bullseye and the apogee is 3.07 inches uh, at 114 yards. Now 3.07 inches is how many inches above the line of sight or the direct line between the muzzle and the center of the target. Over on the right, it tells me here my muzzle, muzzle height, the speed of sound for this particular temperature and altitude. And then I have my checkboxes here where it allows me to turn on and off the data that I see on the chart. For example, if I want to see just my range markers, I'll just check that box. If I want to show my ground strike marker, so it tells me uh, how many yards down range the bullet will hit the ground. I can turn that on. Turn the apogee marker on and off, and the transonic marker. And we'll talk about that one in a little bit here. In the middle, we have our turret simulator. Uh, for the bullet drop chart, it has the elevation turret simulated, and I can simulate clicks of the uh, the, the elevation turret by putting in uh, numbers here. Uh, Positive numbers uh, would, would be the same as moving my elevation turret up. Negative numbers would be down. And the wind drift chart is very similar to the bullet drop chart, although the only option I have is to turn the range markers on and off. I have the same legend over here on the left. And in this case, I've got a bullseye because I have no wind and uh, wind speed uh, entered in my input parameters. And I have my windage turret simulator down here on the left, or in the center of it. Now, to get the trajectory table to recalculate, all you have to do is enter a new piece of uh, input data. For example, I'll come down here to my muzzle velocity, and I'll change it to, I'll well, say, 2000. And you'll notice when I start typing, the background uh, of the text box there becomes red. Uh, that means, uh, just like anywhere else in uh, Reloader's Workshop, uh, that means that the va value is invalid. And you can hover over the text box and it'll tell you what the valid values are. And in this case, the value must be between 500 and 5,000. So if I put in 2,000, as soon as I, I hit the, the last zero here, the, the background will go white, the data will be valid, and my trajectory table will be recalculated. Okay. There's no calculate button to press or anything like that. I just you know, put in the, uh, the new information uh, and uh, it'll automatically recalculate for me. Here I'll change the bullet weight to 168 and it gets recalculated. Okay. Now, when you first load Reloader's Workshop, it loads a set of reference data um, roughly based on the Hornady 3031 bullet, which is a uh, uh, 308 caliber, uh, 150 grain bullet. Let me go ahead and put that information in here. And what that is, is that becomes your reference data. Uh, you can have two sets of data, of input data, uh, at any given time. And that way it allows you to compare two bullets together. Uh, you'll see here, I have, uh, on, after input parameters, it says reference data. Well, that means what I'm looking at in the input parameters is the reference bullet. Uh, the reference bullet is, uh, consists of the, these top four fields here, the bullet the ballistic coefficient, the bullet diameter, weight, and length, along with the muzzle velocity. Okay? All the other data is also part of my reference data, but it's the same for my reference bullet and my comparison bullet. Okay, so if you can kind of 
kind of separate the two bullets there. You've got a reference bullet and a comparison bullet. Okay. Now, when I'm looking at my reference data on here, and it says reference data after the, the word input parameters, you'll notice that the lines uh, and the information down on the charts is in red. The reference bullet will always be displayed in red on these charts. And you'll see under my uh, legend down here, it says reference data. 12.49 uh, inches low, apogee at 3.07 inches, and so on. Okay, So the, the reference data will always be displayed in red on my charts. Now if I change something, for example, my reference data has a bullet traveling at 2400 feet per second. If I change that, say, to 2700 feet per second, you'll notice that the word reference data disappears because now this data, the bullet information and the muzzle velocity, no longer match the reference data and the lines and all of my information down here is displayed in black now and if you look at the legend it says current data 9.46 inches low and so on okay so reference data will be displayed in red on the charts current data will be displayed in black now when I'm not looking at my re my reference data in other words I've changed the bullet uh, information or I've changed the muzzle velocity I, what I can do then is I can save this data as my reference data by pressing the Save as Reference Data button. Okay? Or if I just want to get back to my reference data, I can click the Restore Reference Data button and it'll re fill these fields in ba back in with the reference data. Okay? Now, when I'm looking at the current data, I also have a little checkbox here that says Show Reference Data. If, I wanna, if I've forgotten what my reference data is, I can click that box and it'll show me the reference data. If you look over here at the muzzle velocity, the reference data muzzle velocity is 2400. When I turn that off and I'm looking at the current data again, you'll see the muzzle velocity goes back to 2700. Okay. Now, if I want to compare my reference data to the current data here, there's a checkbox over here on the right under the bullet trajectory table. It says compare to reference data. So if I check that, what I get on my charts then are two lines, one in black, which is the current data that I'm looking at, and one in red, which is my reference data. Let me change it a little bit more here so you can see that a little better. There we go. And now the current data is a 2,000 uh, feet per second muzzle velocity, and it hits the ground at 405 yards, whereas my reference data, if I look at that, it's a 2,400 feet per second. Uh, it hits the ground at 461 yards. Now, if I go back, I'm going to restore my reference data here. Oh, by the way, the legend down here tells me uh, black is my current data, red is my reference data, and gives me the information for both. I'm going to restore my reference data back to 2400. I'm going to change my muzzle velocity to 2000, and I'm going to save that as my reference data. Okay. Now I'm going to change my muzzle velocity to 2700 and I'll do my comparison. And I can see here's my reference data, 2000 feet per second, hitting the ground at 405 yards. And in black I have my current data that I'm looking at right now. And it actually goes beyond the 500 uh, yard maximum without hitting the ground. Okay. So that gives you the ability to compare two bullets, uh, your reference bullet and the current bullet that's represented by the current data up here. You can always return to your reference data by hitting restore reference data and then you can change something else. Now, it's only going to change to the current data if you change the bullet information of the muzzle velocity. Everything else that you change up here, for instance, so I change my uh, zero range to 250 yards. Okay? That's still considered the reference data. Now, 250 becomes the reference data. And the next time that I load Reloader's Workshop or start the program, it'll come back with all the, the same information that you see here listed as reference data. So when I shut down Reloader's Workshop and I come back, my zero range will come back at 250 uh, yards. Okay. So changing anything down here, the, the firearm information, the wind speed, temperature, the output options, and so on, won't change the reference data. 
It's only the bullet data and the muzzle velocity. Okay. And that's really all there is to it. Now, the one other uh, option we have here, a couple other options we have actually, we have this calculate stability factor. Now this this will use the Miller twist rule to calculate the stability factor and the adjusted ballistic coefficient of a bullet as, as it travels down, down range. In order to be able to do that I have to have a bullet length because that's part of the uh, uh, formula, the Miller twist rule. If my bullet length is zero, you'll notice that the calculate stability factor uh, checkbox is grayed out. So I'm going to restore my reference data here. That has the bullet length. If I check the calculate stability factor checkbox, you'll see here it calculates the stability factor of the bullet as it travels downrange using the muzzle velocity, the twist rate of my barrel, the, the bullet length and, and weight and so on. Uh, and then it'll adjust the, the ballistic coefficient. Now there's no adjustments necessary because the stability factor is plenty high enough to uh, stabilize this bullet. Anything, a stability factor 1.5 or above is a stable bullet. From 1.0 to 1.5 it is marginally stable and you'll, you'll see a degradation of your ballistic coefficient. Uh, anything below 1, the bullet's simply unstable. Uh, so you can check the, uh, the stability factor uh, of the bullet as it travels downrange. Now that stability fa factor is calculated in the same way that the bullet st stability calculator does, which is accessible from the tools menu. Okay, and, it, and it shows you how the, the, the calculation is done and you know, the, the scale and so on. But for the uh, ballistics calculator, it just gives you the stability factor in numeric uh, format. Okay. And you have to have all the bullet data. The bullet length uh, uh, is, is an important part of that. And if I change something, for instance, I change the, the twist rate, say, to uh, 12, you'll see that the stability factor uh, changes. So the twist rate of the rifle is a big part of the Miller twist rule. That's why it's called the Miller twist rule. Okay, so, have your stability uh, uh, factor calculated. Now, down here on the charts, uh, I showed you that you can turn the uh, different pieces of information on the charts on or off. Uh, the apogee markers, the range markers, and so on. This transonic marker here, uh, you don't see one on the chart right now because the, the bullet is, is supersonic the whole, uh, the whole, across the entire trajectory. But if I change my muzzle velocity, let's say to... I don't know, 1750, there we go. Uh, you'll see now here it shows me uh, a marker where the bullet goes transonic. Now what does that mean exactly? Well, transonic is when the bullet is traveling exactly Mach 1, the speed of sound. Uh, everything to the left of this marker, uh, the bullet is traveling supersonic, or faster than the speed of sound. And as it slows down, eventually it hits Mach 1, right at the speed of sound, and it goes transonic. And that's where it changes from supersonic to subsonic, slower than the speed of sound. So everything to the left uh, on, on the trajectory here is supersonic. Everything to the right is subsonic. Okay? And that's just the point uh, at which that bullet goes from supersonic to subsonic. Okay? Now, if the bullet comes out of the barrel subsonic, Let's say we put in a uh, muzzle velocity of 500. Oh, we get a heck of an arc there. Uh, the bullet is subsonic right up, right off the bat. You see here we have the speed of sound is uh, 1,116 and a half feet per second. Well, the initial muzzle velocity is only 500 feet per second, so it's subsonic. And it'll just put the word subsonic up here uh, to, to indicate that the bullet it's a subsonic load. It's coming out of the barrel slower than the speed of sound. And I can turn that on and off with the uh, checkbox down there on the right. Okay. Same with the transonic uh, marker. Okay. Now let me get rid of some of these markers here. Now the elevation turret simulator uh, allows me to, uh, you know, put clicks on my turret, and as I 
change the turret clicks, you'll see my trajectory changes. Uh, now for 300 yards where my target is, you'll see here it tells me I need 33 up clicks on my turret. So let me let me take that to 33. Now I'm just using the up and down arrows to change this. You can also type it in, but if you type it in, you have to press the enter key in order for it to recalculate. It won't recalculate as you type. So I've got 33 clicks, uh, up clicks on my elevation turret, and you can see that the uh, trajectory uh, intersects the target right at the bullseye, and it tells me it's 0.2 inches low. Pretty close. It doesn't get it exact, but uh, it's 0.2 inches low, which is pretty close. Okay. So I can play with my uh, uh, you know, turret clicks here and see how it modifies or affects the arc of the bullet uh, throughout its flight. If I want to reset it then back to zero, I just hit the reset button and it'll reset my turret back to zero. Okay. Same thing for my wind drift chart. Um, I have the uh, show range marker checkbox. That's the only uh, marker that it's on the wind drift chart. It doesn't have the ground strike or anything like that. Uh, so that's the only uh, marker that I can turn on or off. And the windage turret can be adjusted up and down, or left and right rather, uh, the same as uh, uh, the uh, elevation turret. Okay. Now, let me put in a wind speed here. My wind speed and direction are zero. That's why we see the nice straight line here on my wind drift chart. Let's put in, say, a 10 mile an hour wind from the left. So that would be 270. Remember, the wind direction is the direction the wind is coming from, not the direction it's traveling to. So a wind direction of 270 relative to uh, my shooting direction is uh, 270 would be from, directly from the left to the right. And you'll see that it modifies my uh, trajectory, you know, and I'm off to the right a little bit uh, by 20.62 inches, as a matter of fact. And it tells me up here at 300 yards, I need 26 left clicks on my turret. So I'm going to go ahead, positive is left, so I'm going to go ahead and put 26 clicks on my turret. And you'll see now it intersects the target right at the center, or it's 0 0.20 inches to the right. Now the amount of, of change for each click, of course, is determined by my turret click increment here under my firearm data. So if I have a, a scope that does things in uh, half, one half a minute of angle uh, per click, then that's going to change the number of clicks I need. So now the, I need only 13 left clicks in order to center my impact point. So each, uh, each turret click has a little more uh, now we'll move it a little bit further because now my turret click increment is half a minute, uh, one half a minute angle. And that's really all there is to using the ballistics calculator. Uh, you change your input parameters, it automatically recalculates your uh, trajectory chart. Now the database section up here in the upper left is just used to help you fill out the input parameters. For example, if I want to uh, select a particular firearm in my data, excuse me, in my database, I'm going to select my Smith & Wesson M&P 15. Uh, I can click on that, and that will fill in the firearm data for that particular firearm. It's been zeroed at 100 yards. The sight height is one and a half. Uh, doesn't have a scope on it, so it's got turret click increment of zero, uh, and the twist rate is. 1 and 8. If I select my Remington 700, it'll fill in that firearm data. 200 yard zero range, 1.5 inch sight height, 0.25 MOA per turret click, and a twist of 1 and 10. And once I have a firearm selected up here, of course, then I can't change any of the firearm information. If I reset the database information, everything will go back to uh, you know, any firearm or no specific load or badge, that kind of thing. And I can then change it, but you'll notice that it keeps the last value that it had. So if I just want to 
uh, select a particular firearm just to fill in the, the the data for me and I only want to change one thing I can then go back to reset and I can try it with different twist rates or I can try it with you know different uh, uh, sight height or, or zero range that sort of thing okay. same thing for batches loads uh, for instance if I select a particular load in my database what it will do is fill in the bullet data front that's used in that load you see here the uh, list of coefficient, diameter, weight, and length have been filled in uh, for me the, uh, with, with the data from that particular load. Uh, if I want to select a specific bullet, I can select a particular bullet and it'll fill in that bullet information uh, for uh, whatever bullet I selected. Okay? So that's really all you, all you need to use the database for is to fill in your input parameters uh, a little bit quicker, so you don't have to remember or look up what you know particular bullets uh, diameter and, and weight and so on is. You just select that bullet up here, and it'll fill in it for you. Now, a couple things with the batches and loads. The batches that it lists here, it will only list batches that have batch test data with muzzle velocities, because what it's wanting to get from the batch. Uh, here is the muzzle velocity. So batches that don't have a batch test and, and therefore no muzzle velocity listed uh, won't be listed here. So in this case I only see one batch even though I've got you know, quite a few batches in my database. Only one of them popped up because I've only entered test data for one of those batches. And by selecting that then it will select the load automatically, select the caliber, uh, and select the bullet and my bullet data is, is filled in. Now my muzzle velocity, if I want to use the batch test velocity, I can click on the batch, use batch test uh, velocity radio button and it'll fill in the muzzle velocity from that batch test. If I want to use the load data velocity, I can click on that and what it'll do is use the load data muzzle velocity that I entered when I created the load. And for 18.2 grains of powder using this particular load, I get a muzzle velocity of 2900. If I change the charge, oops, let me reset that here. Let me select a load. Uh, when I had the batch selected, that batch used a specific charge, uh, charge weight or powder weight, uh, so I couldn't change it. But if I only select a load and I want to try the different charge weights, for instance, I select 40 grains as my charge weight, you'll see it fills in the muzzle velocity with 2400. If I try the 43.3, you'll see the muzzle velocity then changes to 2600 because that's the muzzle velocity that I've entered for that powder weight for that particular load. And then I can either, uh, it'll fill that in and I can change it. If I want it, if I tell it to use the load data, then it disables the muzzle velocity text box so I can't change it. So. Uh, if I have a batch selected, I can select either the batch test velocity or the load test velocity. Uh, if the uh, batch is, is cleared, then I, I only have the option to use the load data velocity because I don't have a batch selected. Okay. I can also you notice when you bring down the, the bullet uh, combo here, there's a lot of different bullets selected. If I'm looking for a specific caliber, I can select just that caliber, say 308 Winchester, and it only lists the bullets uh, that are usable in 308 Winchester. Okay. And as soon as I select something up here on the, on the database and it fills it in, in the input parameters, just like everywhere else in the ballistic calculator, it immediately recalculates my uh, uh, trajectory table and my drop chart and wind rate charts. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If so, please click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and happy reloading.